Yo, yo. Got a little package for you. Oh, damn. You about to... Oh, we doing it? <laughs> you talking about oh, we doing it? I had went to your Instagram because you got the white and the black. So I'm like, okay. Uh -huh. So I give him the white or the black. And I had seen you. He like rocking the black. You know what I mean? So I rock all it black. It should be good, man. Try blend. So the, you know, the material, all that. And then these. These there are OG. Go. You see me? You there see me go. modeling right here? These are the OG first ever GSA sweatpants. So, you know. I see the fitted, right. too. I see the fitted. Nice joggers. Word. Appreciate that, yes, appreciate sir. that. Right, Let's get to work. Let's get it. Good, bro. So, you know, uh, whether we want to call this the Agent Talk Podcast or this is the J. Penny way, whatever you want to talk about, <laughs> man, really just want to have a dialogue, you know, and kind of give something to the people that That's they right. can know who Jason Pinnock really is. So, first and foremost, Jason, if someone asks you, they say, describe Jason Pinnock, yeah. who is he? I'm a, I'm a confident dude. I come from a strong family. I'm big on family. Uh, what you mean? As far as on the field, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a trash talker. I like to talk. I like to control my opponent. I like to get them early in the game. Uh, game, I mean, once you get to this level, man, everybody there physically, you know what I'm saying? Then you got to grab them mentally. So mm -hmm. that's what I like to do, especially with the defense. We play that pit, you know, it's man to man. All day, like I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna be with you all day. Feel me? So I like to get to them early, and I was always a dude in our defense where I just kind of follow people. Like I'm gonna follow you. It's gonna be me and you all day. So who? Now you brought up your fam. Give us a little background. You're from Windsor. I see you actually got the tat. I didn't yes, realize sir. that. You yes, sir. Right <laughs> Growing up in Connecticut, like, what's your family like? Can you describe your mom, your dad? Like, what, what's the family vibe like? But a huge family dynamic. Mom originally from a small little country outside of Columbus, Georgia, called Buena Vista, real country. Next neighbor probably a mile away. You know what I'm saying? Uh, dad from born in Jamaica, lived there for six years, lived in Manchester in Westmoreland, and then uh, moved out to Tallahassee. That's where he grew up. So really come from a southern household, but lived in the north. Got if it. that makes sense. Yeah, so you feel me? So, yeah, okay. so it's a little different, but everybody, you know, they hear me talk or even back in Connecticut, they be like, damn, bro. Like, but yeah, it's just all my cousins from Jacksonville or Thomasville, Georgia. Right. So, I mean, a lot of my family from the South, you know, my mom, a real black Southern yeah. woman. Right, right. You feel me? Okay. So how did you get to Pittsburgh? Why Pittsburgh? Being from Connecticut, like why Pittsburgh for you? See, I was, uh, as a kid, my, my dad was big on traveling, experiencing, seeing the world, like understanding there's way more different stuff out there than where you live in and what you see day to day, feel me? So, you know, I was committed to Boston College for about seven months, about seven months, right before signing day, Pitt offer, bigger offer started coming. Never even knew about Pitt, to be honest with you, never knew about Pitt. Went there, checked it out, but it was like a brotherhood. Like I went, they made uh, Narduzzi chose to have me come on the weekend where all the commits came. So like I just seen the brotherhood, and that's really what it ended out to be too. Like all of us, Jalen Twyman, Paris mm -hmm. Ford, Cam Bright, everybody who like we went out with, like it was like a family immediately. Right. You know, I ain't really get that nowhere else. Like when I visited, so I fell in love with that, and obviously the experience, like. The relationship they had with the Steelers, you walk in, a lot of people don't get it that we in the same building. Like, it's the same building. How is that? Being you feel college, me? Like, like, you're in college, you're walking in as a freshman. Yo. You're seeing Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden. Like, uh, uh, James Conner. Uh, ben Roethlisberger. Juju, Juju Smith. Beyonce, Big ben. What is it? What's that experience like to see guys every day that are where you're aspiring to be? What is that like? So, and that's the thing, you see it once you get older too, you see the transition. You know what I'm saying? You come in and it's more just starstruck, bro. You don't want to talk to them. You don't really want to. You feel like you ain't on their level. You can't. But they dudes just like us. They just a little older. They've been there. They've done that. They went through the experience. And with them, a lot of guys, Deontay Johnson, Terrell Edmonds, Ola, all them guys, they cool dudes. Like, they're going to talk to you. They're going to give you game. You know, I chill with them guys. They show me around the city, whatever the case may be. They tell you the ins and outs, how to deal with, you know, friends back home when you get money and stuff like that, you know. So it was, it was dope, man. And that's why I took that opportunity, you know, to go to a school like that that had that type of 
relationship with the, where I'm trying to go, right. you know, because I got a lot of insight early that other college kids probably didn't get. Correct. Me? What would you say to someone that right now they're deciding what school they want to get to and pick is one of them that yeah. they're considering? Why should that individual go to Pittsburgh? Just and what I just explained. You can't beat it. I mean, there's no there's no other team in the country that has that, and it's that close. You may have them in the same city. You know what I'm saying? But they 20 minutes Y'all away. Really yeah, they they, they right, grown right. men. This it's not like college where you oh you finish your practice oh where you about to go eat at like they grown they got wife and kids like they going home you know so it's different. But to be in the same building to talk to Tomlin after coming off of your mm-hmm. practice and they starting theirs and you like yo Coach T like. How, what's a good blitz? Like, what's right. what what makes a, a blitzer a great blitzer? How do I how do I show I'm versatile? How do I you know man to man press? What do you like? You know, to somebody that p- could potentially draft you. You know, exactly. you get that every day. Like Coach T, we talk every day. like you know him mm-hmm. in the city. You see him, he speak. You know, they right. human. You know, you build real genuine relationships. So it's crazy. That's all. Right. Okay, so outside of Pitt, Jason, yeah. Pinnock, Himself, if we're talking, you mentioned your mom, you mentioned your dad, and just the traveling and whatnot. For sure. If your parents had to describe you as a person, how would they describe you? What words would they utilize to describe you? Strong, strong minded, strong minded. I was never the kid that was in school, like disrespectful. But if it didn't make sense, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it had to be logical for me as a kid. Like, you couldn't just tell me to do anything. I wasn't one of them naive kids. I was real strong-minded, so I mean, they would definitely say I'm strong-minded, I'm strong-willed, I'm smart, and I receive a lot of information. Like, if I'm in a new environment, I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna observe first. I'm very observant. But yeah, I seen that when we walked into the apartment. And yeah. We were talking about the trash, trash people right here. This is right. Oh here. yeah. <laughs> going, I'm, like, what? Man, I'm telling you, first day I pull up, I gotta know where everything is, all the essentials, like everything you're gonna do. I don't wanna the trash get stinky. Now I'm like, oh, I don't even know where the trash room at. Like I ain't gonna do that. I know where the trash room at, dry cleaning, the the pet the pet place. I ain't that even got a dog. Right, yeah, right. but I just know it because I need to. It make me comfortable. You feel right. me? It make right. me real comfortable. Okay, last thing on your childhood, you had mentioned how valuable you believe it was that your dad and your parents were intentional yeah. about you traveling. Yeah. One is why was that so important for you? And two, is there anywhere that you have been or want to go that stands out for you? So first is why was that so important for you? So that's always been, and I kind of was just on the phone last night with my dad, and he's like, you know, you could spend as much money on jewelry, cars, you know, whatever, you're going to forget about that when you're my age, like him speaking, you know? But he's like, them experiences, and my cousin uh, just passed away about two weeks ago. We just flew out to Tallahassee. So, um, you know, just it was more joy, you know, celebrating his life because of, you know, their family didn't really have the money or the finances to do those things, but my dad always paid every year for everything because he wanted the experience. It wasn't about the money, you know? So that's something he always stressed in me, bro, is like, it's going to be the experiences that you cherish. Not that jewelry you had on while you did it, you know? Not them shoes, not the car you drove when you did it. It's about the people you had. It's about the, you know, just the love, yeah, share, right, everything, right, right. you feel me? So, nah, that travel always been big for me, always been big. Where's next? Where do you want to go? If you go, <sighs> you go anywhere, you just got drafted, you got the check. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A little money in your pocket. I'm going. If you can go anywhere, where are you going? Dubai or Bali, Indonesia. Okay. I'm the top two right now, yeah. top two. Okay. I ain't no really like Cali. I, I don't want to go nowhere in state because, like I said, it's about... Something completely, something different. completely different, yeah, mm. completely different. That's pretty cool. My that was something that my dad. I feel like your dad and my dad would hit it off. Cause For that sure. was something he was always about. Like, yeah. He took us to Europe. He took us to this place, to that place, wherever it could be. Me and Liv, even in the country, bro, we went to Maui, mm-hmm. out of Hawaii. I'm like, oh, this is a part of the country, bro. <laughs> yeah. you know I'm, I'm saying you see things, you like, bro. You what? That you only see like, on TV, on Instagram. And exactly. Why do you think people? Why do you think it's so hard for people to realize that the experiences are more valuable than the possessions? Why do you think? Uh, 
it's I think it's human nature. It's uh humans are un- like afraid of the unknown. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. as soon as they find themselves comfortable somewhere, they don't oh, want to leave. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you weren't forced to be in them uncomfortable situations early, you're not gonna want to like. And I, I I see that the more people I meet. And they're like, you know, they get uncomfortable around new circumstances, new environments. But and that's why I'm so glad my father pushed that on us early. Right. And that's something I'm instilling in my kids, you know, because it makes me comfortable flying out and living this lifestyle and being able to relax, you know, and still be able to do what I need to do in a day to day. You know, right. but definitely just being afraid of the unknown. That's why people don't really, you know, like to experience those type of things. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, that's true, man. And I definitely agree. Because I told you, like, even coming out here, like, we brought Roman and Lynn. Yeah. And you got to just book the ticket. I'm telling you. go. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, a question. Moving forward now. So, you're done at Pitt. You've had mm-hmm. your career. You're someone you're in the pre-draft process right now. What is your mindset? You've been out here maybe two or three weeks. What is the mindset like for you right now, knowing that in less than four months, you could potentially be, be getting the phone call that you've been dreaming about? Like what is, where is your mental right now? Right now, it's literally this is something we uh, like stressed at Pittsburgh too. Is three percent better? Like you either get three percent better. Why three percent? one percent, but why three percent? Three percent, cause one ain't one ain't good enough. <laughs> but uh, nah, really, really, it's just you know every day you getting better, you getting worse. Like you not staying the same. It's impossible. To, you know what I'm saying? It's impossible to stay the same. So I try and get up early. I try and get my stretches in. I try to, you know, I just try and do everything right because, like you said, in the next four months, everything I work, everything, all them Sundays I watch as a kid, right. like, it could happen, you know? So, yeah. like that. So it's like every day right now, especially, it's like it's getting a step closer, you know? And being able, you can either help your draft stock or worsen it. You know, so I'm just really taking every day as an opportunity to show, like, yo, I'm worth whatever, you know, whatever it is. Why? You're talking to a head coach. Yeah. GM. Okay. You mentioned Mike Tomlin or whoever, Pete Carroll. For sure. And I'm them right yeah. now. Yeah. And they ask you, Jason, why should we draft you over all these other corners in the draft? What is the one thing that makes you stand out more than anything else? I'm a ball hawk. Like when, when when they see the ball in the air, they should be able to like like get the offense ready. You know what I'm saying? Like for real though. <laughs> right, right, right. Like you it's laughing, awesome. I'm dead serious okay. though. Like I'm dead serious. Like and that's that's how I feel though. You know, at, at Pitt we played a lot of man to man. You know, it probably didn't allow me to show the best part of my game, but the best is yet to come. Mm-hmm. Like and I, that's that's something I'm definitely gonna stress. And I think that's something I put on film anytime I got the opportunity to do it, you know? So, but yeah, that's what I would tell. And I also stress that I'm versatile. I played nickel. I played, you know, on the fastest, considered the fastest player that year, Anderson from uh, UCL. Oh, I didn't try, yeah. yeah. So, checked him all day in the slot. 6'2", 205, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm running. I'm running with the fastest. I'm with the biggest. I'm jumping with the biggest, and I'm, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's what I do. I'm versatile, lined up an outside linebacker in our Delta packages. I came, I blitz off the edge, got sacks. I've, right. I've, I've done, done it all. Done, done it all. Tackles for loss, all, whatever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I could do whatever they need me to do. You know, jammer on punt return. I'm, they ain't even, you know, I'm stopping their feet. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'll do whatever they need me to do. Last question in regards to ball. One. We want to have signed you if I didn't believe in everything you're saying. Right, okay. right. However, through this process, if there is one thing that you can work on more than anything else, what is that one thing? One thing I'm focused on is what I put into my body as far as health, because speaking to all these, you know, dudes at the next level and next door is like, your body is, that's your job. You know what I'm saying? That's your, that's what's making you your money. You got to watch what you're putting into it as far as eating. I'm a big eater. I'm Jamaican. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely got to drink that water. You feel me? I'm over here too. I'm good. I'm yeah. good money. But nah, it's, it's, it's definitely what you put in your body, what you invest in your body. I mean, it's something about LeBron came out a few years ago. He put over a million dollars into right, right. his body. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Wilson, they just said he, he put about the same. The same thing. Right. So that's the transition from like college 
to high school, you know, in college, you you eating what's on campus, you doing what you do, you know. But you're really just trying to make it. Yeah, you're just trying to make it. But once you start to realize like how much better you feel waking up, how fast your body recovers, the faster your body could recover, the more you could work out, the more you could put in, you know. So that was probably the biggest thing I'm focused on is my body, what I'm putting in my body. And I mean, it's going well. I'm about 5% body fat. So like, I'm, I, I leaned had, up, I leaned up. Yeah, shred it, shred it. Yeah, shred it. Okay, uh, so here's a question for you. Excuse me. If you, just lab, just really want to touch on this a little bit on football, then we want to go to a few other things. So yeah. If you could go to any team, play any scheme, is there anywhere in particular that you would long to go to? Or any scheme you prefer? I'm just curious, like, what your thoughts are. Do you have any preference? No, nah, not really. Oh no, nah, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go to the Northeast, okay. but listen, I'm, I'm ready for whoever call. Right. But um, nah, no, no specific style, cause like I said, I like zone man, it, it really don't matter. Like I, I don't have a preference. I don't have a preference, nah. Got you. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious, man. So I really just want to move forward. You know, we talked about ball. We talked about the pre-draft process, all the things. Yeah. Different ins and outs. If you're not yet, Jason's put out a lot of good content. Okay, follow him on the gram. We'll get the plugs in a little bit. Outside of ball is really what I want to touch on real quick. Okay. Being from Connecticut, those that are watching, because a lot of people that are going to watch this, for sure, they're going to be from the crib. Okay? From the crib. Is there any location, any memories, any places about your childhood that stand out? Was there any Damn. go-to spots, any place you was taking a girl, your friends? What <laughs> stands out about that home in Connecticut? Uh, I think always just we always just hit the mall. Like it ain't really much to do in Connecticut, you know. But probably Buckland, uh, Buckland, what's that? Bu Buckland Hills Mall. Oh, so okay, that's the okay, mall. Okay. West Farms, like so that's that's like the little bit nicer part. So yeah, we go there all the time. Uh, but locations, man. Any man, shout out Branford Street. Shout, Air, out Branford. shout out Branford Street, man. Shout out Preston Street. Shout out Maple Ave. Man, all them streets, all my dogs who rode them bikes with me and them hot summer days and riding to the grocery store to CVS, all that, they know, man. We used to be playing in the street, using shirts as out of bounds and bikes as, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, I know you've been there. Yeah. So, so man. what? Blue Ridge. What is, oh, Blue Trail. Blue Trail. Blue Trail. Oh, oh, shooting range. What is, gun range. So, what's Blue Trail? I know you said gun range. How did your passion for shooting? Yeah. Well, I, never, I think I told you. I ain't never shot a gun before. Really? Oh, I gotta take you. Yeah. Where did that come from? Like the desire, like oh, this is something that I think you know a lot of people are honestly afraid to even home or gun. Right. Where did that come from? Where did that desire come from? Like you know, like what inspired you to want to shoot a gun? Like what was that thought process like? Like what was that thought process like? Where did that come from? Like the desire, like oh, this is something that I think you know a lot of people are honestly afraid to even home or gun. Right. And it's all about knowledge, though. And that's where the fear come from too. I was fearful too when I first you know started shooting, but um the. Where it came from, right. my mom, she country. So, you know, that's what they she do. Right. My pop pop, my pop pop, he always shot guns and stuff. I always carried a revolver. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the passion just came. But it, the the real gun wizard wizard in our like household is my brother, which shout you are. Out. Shout, shout out, out Trey. Trey. <laughs> shout, shout out Trey. Trey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out my brother Trey, man. That's my dog, bro. That's my biggest inspiration. But now nah, he... uh. He the gun wizard. Like, he'll tell you caliber, anything. He'll look at one and be like, oh, dang, that's a single stack. Like, oh, everything, bro. Mm -hmm. Bro, crazy. Okay. But, um, nah, he started the passion and pushing my whole family to get, like, their LTC and stuff. So my mother got clear. She just got hers. And, oh, for real? Yeah, so, you know, everything, man. They, uh, because they real strict with uh, gun laws and stuff. Obviously, like, uh, New England and uh, right, Northeast right, in right. general. But, um, yeah, man, just dealing with the process and, Having fun with them, bro. And once you understand something, like I said, the humans fear the unknown. You just know it's deadly. It's a deadly That's firearm. Right. You know? You hear stuff, oh, this person went such and such and they shot themselves. Or right. And you hear about these freak accidents, but nobody like explains the percentages of them things mm -hmm. happening. And our best way, what we, right. what we start, like our intro, like when we explain, you know, gun safety and gun, you know, stuff to other people and to new people like you who never shot one, it's like a car. When you get in your car and you start your car, right? You expect that shit to blow up? No. No, man, because you trust it. It's mechanics. Right. You know what I'm saying? So once you learn a gun, you know, oh, you this know is how I load it. it. Uh, this is how, okay. you feel right. me? Right. You carry it. You know, you carry it on you all day, every day. It's not really, it doesn't, it doesn't affect you. It don't bother you because you know your weapon. You know your car. 
you know? So that's the biggest way we do it before we even put a gun in, in somebody's hands, you know what I'm saying? Before we put a gun in their hands, we explain to them, you start your car, you don't sit in there like, oh, please don't blow up, please don't blow up, please don't blow up, and start it, you feel me? So That's good, man. That, that is a very good uh, analogy because yeah. that's so true. That, and that's what one of my buddies, he said, you know, more people are killed by bad drivers than people that are doing whatever with a gun. That's exactly. the reality of a car you get to a 15 year old and they boom, 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 you do whatever you want. You're going, you right. Going. Exactly. Um, I like that concept that you just brought up as well as the fear of the unknown. That is so, that's real. Yeah. Boy, that is very real. And you kind of just check me because that's true. It's just yeah, yeah. Honest, like, I just, the only fear is because it's just you don't know. You don't know what you're doing. Right. A question for you is there anything right now that is in the unknown territory that you are fearful of? Or that you have any anxiousness about? Mm. Nothing off the top of my head because I've always been taught if you don't know something, ask and figure it out. Find out for yourself because, again, so you're not fearful and you're more right. comfortable. Right. The more stuff you know, the more, you know, the wiser you are, the more knowledge you gain from other people. And that's the more comfortable you'll be in any situation, you right. know? Okay, solid, solid. Last few questions regarding Connecticut. Mm -hmm. The Connecticut. Way. Kennedy way. What does that come from? What is the Kennedy way? Mm -hmm. What is the brand? Obviously, there are certain things we've talked on on trying to expand the Kennedy way. Yeah. What is it though? Like for you, if someone asks you, Jason, what is the Kennedy way? How are the people of Connecticut? What makes someone that's like grit and grind from Connecticut? What is that like? What would you say? It's 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 coming out the mud, man. Coming out where. Uh, not a lot of people even know about. You know, I get out and I'm like, right, exactly. Right, right. You know, so meeting a lot of people from bigger places or bigger states, they're like, I, they can't even point out Connecticut on the map. You know, so like the Connecticut way is just our way. You know, of saying mm -hmm. like, this is from entrepreneurs. You know, clothing lines, rappers, artists, athletes, whatever the case may be. You know, we just it's our way of supporting. You know. We want to put that as a, like, that's, I want to push that as my brand of let's support each other. You know, I think it's a big misconception mm. back home that, oh, Connecticut like this. They like support. They don't want to, you know, but we got support. We just got to stay together. Right. And that's the Kennedy way. You know what I'm saying? The Kennedy way. Just everybody staying together. Everybody support. Right. That's interesting because when I had came up here, when we were recruit, when I came up to meet you, yeah. That was my first time ever coming up there, and I get off the plane like, bro, this is the most snow I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> For real. Driving, bro, you driving around, and y'all, what's they call it, snow plows? But yeah. Yes. And I'm like, bro, what? This, they got snow plows? Like, we got lawnmowers. <laughs> yeah. However, when you had, like, thinking, because on the way home, you know, my mind goes to the brand and the marketing. I'm thinking, like, what is it from an outsider's perspective? What is the Kennedy way? And it's kind of just like you said, it's one realizing the unison that people have, whether it's a you, whether it's a few other guys that we recruited, that we talked to, Rodney, that's yeah. been up there, that's on our team, it's those that are up there. I don't know if it's because of the size, but it's like y'all are like this. That's what it seems. But it also, because my girl's from uh, Boston area, Massachusetts, lives yep. in the Boston area, and it just kind of showed me, man, the Kennedy way also is just like that, like I said, that grit and grind to go through the hard winter. Right. To go through that snow, to go through like if ice put the all that, someone soft and just weak minded, you can't take it. You know, them cold hard winters that y'all have. So I think it's that is definitely something that I encourage you to continue to tap into. For sure. And I think you got a lot of people behind you that's gonna, you know, help support the brand as well. Um just so again, last few questions, man. I keep saying that, but then more <laughs> you right now, how old are you? I'm twenty one. Twenty one. Now you're young buck. Yeah, someone yeah, yeah. that's twenty one. In the shoes you're in, where you're just a few months away from you know getting to where you're trying to get to. Right. What would be one thing you would tell someone that maybe is like I said, they're about to step on the campus. Maybe it's that young freshman that just enrolled as an early enrollee in Pitt. What would be one tip or lesson, truth that you would give to that individual that you wish someone would have told you when you were younger? Man, be it so. You're gonna have. There's gonna be a lot of different. You know people from different areas and maybe groups that, you know, especially me from Connecticut, small town, you're not going to go a lot of places that, you know, everybody knows you, you know, or they know about where you came from. 
So my biggest thing, man, and what I'm glad I came from a strong family is just be yourself. You know, protect your integrity. You know, you definitely want to protect your integrity because that's all you got, right? At the end of the day, you know, no matter how famous you get, no matter how much money you get, whatever, you know, protect your integrity. That's all I would tell them. You gotcha. know, be yourself. Your quote on your Instagram bio says, I want to say it's, you know, be formless, be like water. <laughs> Bruce Lee. Why that quote? There's a quote, Bruce Lee, man, just... Kind of like the whole, it, oh, and it's so funny. That's kind of like, the, yeah, it's the, un, yeah, you know? So it's just, bro, soak everything in, man. The more knowledge you know, and it just, yeah, like, I, I just love that quote. I was watching, I think I was watching, like, a biography or something, or something like that, and then his, uh, like, a little clip came up on the TV, and he was saying it, and he was like, be formless, and just be like water. Like, water flows, man. Water flow, it flows into everything, you know? So I just, I, mean, I just try and be like water. Whatever my environment is, I like to just flow into it, absorb like it. it all up. Yeah, like it. Last question on the top for me. You are in a position again where, you know, Lord willing, you're gonna get drafted. You're training. You're building this brand. You're doing certain things. You have a lot of good in front of you. For sure. In this moment right now, what is the one thing that you are most grateful for? One thing, man, I'm from Connecticut, bro. I wasn't supposed to be here. I'm so I'm grateful for everything. I wake up every day and I just, you know, you just thank God. Thank God for the smallest things. And I think I just tweeted something kind of similar to that. Just thanking him for all the things I forget to thank, thank him for. Mm -hmm. You know, the the smallest thing. I mean, the crib I'm in, you know, the whatever, the car I drive. That people ain't got a car. People ain't got a house. People ain't got clothes. You know, just for everything. But the biggest thing, man, I thank him for family. My family got me through a lot, you know, family got me through those dark times in college where you like, you know, you either second guessing yourself or whatever the case may be, stuff just getting hard, you far away from home, you know, but yeah, man, I'm just, I'm grateful for my family. That's what's up. Shout out to the fam, shout out to Lou. Shout out to the fam, shout man. Out shout out, out, man. Shout out the road runners, man. My grandma, my mama, shout out my dad. You know, he was a big inspiration for me, played at IU. Played right at uh, Indiana. Big uh, Big Ten dude. Big Ten dude. He was mad at me going to the ACC, mm -hmm. but yeah, right. man, he's going to have to deal with it. Right. Uh, man, shout out my brother, a big dog. One five still alive. He's the biggest reason I wore 15 in college. Mm -hmm. Man, shout out all my cousins, all the support. Uh, shout out Lisa with love. You know what I'm saying? She just started her brand. We're going to kick that off. Uh, man, there's so many people that. Just thank in my family. It's a big old family, man. Big old family. Yeah, that's good. And I said that was the last question, but I do have just really a few more. Where, before we slide, where can people connect with you? Obviously, Instagram, Twitter, what are your handles? Let people know where they can connect with you. So we got Twitter. I should be able to pull it up too. <laughs> Twitter is just first name, underscore last name. So Jason, underscore Pinnock. My Instagram is jpenny, J-P-I-N-N-Y, 15, jpenny15. Snapchat, same thing as Instagram, jpenny15. Uh, yeah, that's it. Last question. If you could leave one last message to the world, if this was your last time that you ever get to record content, you ever get to talk, you get one last statement, however long, however short, that you can give out to the world, that this is from Jason Pinnock, what is that statement that you want to leave the world with? Nothing worth having is going to be easy. Like, I learned that. Like, this whole process, and I know we, you know, we always shoot the content of the great stuff, you know, it's stuff like this, but it's, it's going to be hard, bro. It's going to be hard times. It's going to be times you might second guess yourself. It may be times where the circumstances ain't right, it's not falling. You know, you may map something out. There's big people that organize things and they plan stuff out. And when stuff starts falling, you know, it's like, damn, like this ain't, this shit ain't working out, man. Like, mm -hmm. but it's going, like, you got to fight through it. Like, I would just say, it, 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 pff, bro, like, it ain't, easy. it ain't easy, man. It ain't easy. It ain't easy, but it you got to do it. And, and I think in this generation, bro, with all this social media shit, like, they make it, you know, I'm in the bands, I'm in the, you know what I'm saying? Everything look good, you know? But I came from the same shit everybody else came from who know me back home in Connecticut, bro. But it's just, 
It was hard. It was hard. It wasn't easy. It was not easy. So here, so anything so, else you got for the people that you want to share? Are you good? Man, it's just shout out Connecticut, man. We on the way. We on the way.